stopped it and I'm still listening to it. <laughs> I can't see you anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. We're going to go to the book of Genesis this morning. Genesis meaning the book of beginnings. Uh, so we're going to, to look Genesis chapter 3. Christmas is coming up. And one of the questions that gets asked around families is, what do you want for Christmas? And sometimes you go to the store and you're wandering through the store going, so what in the world do I buy this person for Christmas? Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I know the kids talk about, the, they try to go to the store and find something and stuff like that. But God gave us a gift. He gave us a gift that is greater than any gift could ever be. And when we think about that gift this morning, it met a need that was greater than any other need that mankind has. We look at and we're going to be looking at the fall of man here in just a moment and some other things that go along with it. We have a God who knows us and who takes care of that need. But let us go ahead and go to our Lord in prayer. Our Father, as we come to your name of Christ, Lord, we just ask that you would lead us and guide us. Lord, we pray that as we look upon your word, that you would open it up to us so that we may see what you have for us. Lord, we just ask that you would help us to understand just how great you are. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Before we go to these verses, I want to read a verse from Genesis chapter 1. Where God says this, Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. I want us to understand a couple of things before we begin. God created a perfect place. Absolutely. God created something, as he says there in Genesis 1, it is very good. Now if God says something is very good, yeah. it has to be. Now, in part of that creation was the creation of man. So when God created man and, and put him into the creation, you'll find that he says it was very good. Man at that point had a relationship with God that even today we don't have. Well, one of these days that relationship will be restored. Amen. And we'll see that relationship. But I want us to know something. Man has something good in him because God created us. Uh, when people tell me something like this, oh, man is no good, they're missing something that God created. Because when God created man, he said it was very good. Man is fallen. And man is not what he was created to be. But he is still a creation of God. And he is still made by God. And that hasn't changed. This is what changed. Now, let's take a look at what he says. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, As God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. <clears throat> now before I go on, I want you to know something. Adam's right there with her. Because you will find that in chapter 3. You go on, and we'll be looking at this in a little bit. She gave also to her husband, who was with her. So don't just blame Eve here, okay? Adam was right there with her. But I want us to look at this. Satan is questioning her knowledge, their knowledge of God. 
I don't know how long after the creation this was. It doesn't matter. It, some people think it's the next day. I don't believe it was the next day. Some people say it could be thousands of years later. I don't know if it was that far or not. All I know is questioning what do you know about God? Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Is God withholding something from you? Is God keeping something from you? Now as you look at this temptation, we understand something. Man is tempted. There is nothing sinful in temptation. It's not the temptation that's the sin. It's what you do with the temptation that's the sin. Christ was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. So if temptation was the sin, Christ would have fallen just as we would fall, but it's not so. The, the temptation happens. We are all tempted. What we do with that temptation is the important aspect of things. Christ was tempted. We can go to Him for strength. We can get help from Him uh, in order for the, to pass through the temptation. But the temptation in and of itself is not the problem. They were tempted. And, and, and Satan is questioning God's authority and, and saying, is he really holding something from you? Does he really have something that you don't want? And, and, and I look at this, and I wonder, this has always stuck out to me. If a snake came and started talking to me, do you know what I would do? <laughs> I would either kill it or leave. I don't hold conversations with snakes. Apparently, they did. Because she doesn't say, oh, the snake's talking to me. She didn't say, whoa, 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 how is this happening? She answers it. You know, I, I don't know, I, that, that just always blows my mind a little bit there. But she knows what God wants. Knowing what God wants and doing what God wants are a lot of times different, aren't they? Paul put this, puts it this way. The good that I would, that's what I don't do. The evil that I wanted, that's what I do do. We are in a sinful state. And we do that so often. The woman, Eve, knew what God wanted. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, there's been a lot of debate over uh, that last phrase, nor shall you touch it, uh, because that wasn't in the original command of God and so forth. But the thing of it is, she knew what God wanted. Let's just stay away from that tree. We're going to be just fine as long as we stay away from there because God doesn't want us to mess with that. God doesn't want us to, to, to eat of it, so let's just stay completely away from that tree. Knowledge of what God has. James puts it this way. Show me your faith without your works. And I'll show you my faith by my works. Faith, it's an interesting thing. We have it in Jesus Christ. He gave it to us so that we might have salvation. You know, and that's what in Ephesians 2, 8, 9 where he says, For by grace you are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. The faith is not of ourselves. It's given to us by God. We have that. And James is saying, try to show the world you believe in God without pointing to what you do. Or if you say you believe in God and you will know what God has for you or know what God wants and you don't do it, do you really have faith? That's the question he's asking. Well, sure, go on to the, to the next couple of verses, if you will. A servant said to the woman, 
you will not surely die. Now I want you to know something. There's a grain of truth in that. Physically, did they die at that moment they ate of that fruit? No. No. It started a process that we understand as death. Started that process, but they did die spiritually at that moment. So there's a grain of truth in there. Satan isn't just outright lying. He's he's omitting a whole bunch of things in this uh, statement, and he is saying something true in the next verse. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. There's something to be gained by doing this. Now let me ask this strange question. How many of you would sin and go against what God wanted you to do if there was no pleasure or no thoughtful gain or nothing that you would say, okay, this is something I want? How many of us would say, okay, the Bible says that we sin every day, so today's my day and this is the sin I'm going to choose and I just got to get it over with. <laughs> How many of you are like that? <laughs> no, we're not. We fall into temptation, and it tells us this, that we fall into temptation when we are drawn aside by our own lust, our own enticements, our own desires. It's something we look at and we say, hey, that's something I want. And Eve was no different. And remember, Adam's right there. Adam's just being silent. I, 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 I blame him sometimes more than I blame Eve because man, the man's supposed to be the leader of the house and he should have said, let's get out of here. Right. That's, all he should have, that's all he needed to say was, let's get out of here. Right. He failed just as well. So, but I'm not trying to place too much blame there. You know that the day you eat it, you're going to be like God. Wow. I could be like God. There's even a religion out there that says that we're going to be God someday. I'll be like Him. I'll know what's good and evil. There are so many times I wish they hadn't made that. But that's just another story. <laughs> we fall for the same thing. There's a woman saw that the tree was good for food. It was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree desirable to make one wise. She took up its fruit and ate and she also gave to her husband with her. And he ate. See, he was right there. He could have stopped this at any point. He's right there. Disobedience. God had said, not to eat of this tree. Okay? So they ate him. How many commandments did they have to keep? One. So I love it when people say, oh, I'm going to get to heaven by keeping the Ten Commandments. They're going to keep one. What makes them think they're going to keep ten? You know, it's not going to happen. We fall for exactly the same thing. Sin has a consequence. Sin has a problem. And, and we fall into that same thing. Now, there's a lot of people out there, in the Catholic Church in particular, that says we're guilty of this same sin. We're guilty of original sin. No, we're not guilty of original sin. That's a Catholic doctrine. They can have it. And they baptize infants to take away original sin. Doesn't work in, the, in that aspect either. We're guilty of our own. But I want us to understand something. We inherited a sinful nature. Shall I go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if you will? Uh, well, you've already got it up there. Very good. <laughs> As in Adam, all die. Even so in Christ, all shall be made alive. We inherited that sinful nature of Adam. 
the Bible tells me in uh, the book of Romans chapter 3 where it says, For all have sinned and come short to the glory of God. How many of us sinned? All of us. How many of us came short of the glory of God? All of us. I like where he says this. He says, if you keep the whole law, this is in James, if you keep the whole law and offend it in one point, guess what? You're guilty of the whole thing. You know, I, I, I look at this and I see this and I understand that our position is death. For the wages of sin is death. That's what we have. That's in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The wages of sin is the death, and that and all by. Shall I go to Hebrews, if you will? In Hebrews it says this, is appointed unto man once to die, but after that the judgment. I love that aspect. Once to die. Some people get the great, horrible opportunity to die twice. That's where he talks about in Revelation, the second death. Where they're thrown into that lake of fire apart from God throughout all eternity. Some of us, it's only once. And you know, for some of us, we're going to escape that when God comes and changes us. Amen. But I want you to notice that. Once. No one has to be at that great white throne judgment. No one has to be at that second death. We go back to Romans 6.23 where he says this, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The result of sin, shall I go back to Genesis, if you would. Uh, Genesis 7, sure. The eyes of both of them were open. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. You wanted to know good and evil. You wanted to know what was right and what was wrong. There was nothing in that fruit that changed them. <clears throat> it was their disobedience to God that changed them. That fruit could have been a pear, it could have been an apple, it could have been a peach, it could have been anything. Because there was nothing in it that changed it. It was their disobedience to God that changed them. And it was very, very simple. They disobeyed God, and God said, here is the result of that. And they were changed. The world was changed because of it. We just sang about it. That the curse will be lifted. You know, when we think about creation, sometimes we think God created the things in those six days, and that was the end of it. Well, God created some things for us. Thorns. I just love thorns. How many of you love thorns? <laughs> poison ivy. How many of you love poison ivy or poison oak? Insects. The, the, the mosquito bites. Uh, I'm allergic to bee stings. How many of you love all those things? Some of you have an irrational fear of a spider. I mean, they're this big and, and the, you run from them. Fruit flies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all of these things are part of the curse. And, and the Romans tells us that the whole creation is groaning, waiting for that curse to be lifted. These things were brought in because of what Adam did and Eve did. He tells us that later in the book of Genesis that they're brought in. So there's a, another creation here. It's not the creation I like so much. But it's brought in. Man was changed. The world was changed. Because of this sin. I contend winter is part of the curse. <laughs> Amen. Well, if you had no clothing, 
and it's 30 degrees outside or 20 degrees outside or whatever, how well are you going to like that? I contend that's part of the curse. Snow in itself would be nice if it's warm. <laughs> but there's a bigger part of the curse. So we know what's right and wrong. So we have thorns. We have all these other problems. They heard the sound of God. Walking in the garden. We were created for fellowship with God. God created us to have fellowship with us. And he comes to the garden to fellowship with him. Now what do we do? What does Adam and Eve do? It hasn't changed since this day. They hide from it. Mm. Man is doing exactly the same thing today as he did in that day of the garden. They hide themselves from the presence of the Lord God. They don't want to hear what he has to say. We have inherited that nature. This would be a sad story if it ended right there. This would be a horrible story if it ended right there. But it doesn't end there. We go on in this story, if you would, you would find that God kills an animal and clothes them with, with the animal's skin. And you would find that God makes a promise. I'll greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception and pain. You shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then we have the cursing of the ground, and we have all that is done with that. But God promises a Savior. You know, the passage of you, bruise the, your heel and bruise his head promise of Christ. The promise of that gift of salvation. We needed the gift. We all have that sinful nature of Adam. While they may not be guilty of Adam's sin, I'm guilty of enough of my own. I don't have to add his. I have that inherited sinful nature. But God didn't leave us there. God didn't leave us in that position. When we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate a verse in John chapter 3, verse 16, where it says, For God so loved the world. You see, this didn't change God's love for man. This didn't make God go, I can't stand man anymore. This didn't make it where he didn't say, Well, good, you know, okay, we're not very good. I'll, I'll give you that. We're not very good anymore. My grandfather used to say, if he had asked somebody how you're doing, and they'd say, oh, I'm doing pretty good, he'd say, you told two lies. Uh -oh. <laughs> the first, you're not pretty. <laughs> and the second is, there's nobody good but God. That's good. That's good. I've never tried that on anybody. I'm afraid of what might happen. <laughs> we may not be good, but we are loved. Yes, yes. And God wants to restore a relationship that we broke. And that's what we celebrate. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. How much does 
Does God love you? That He sent His Son to the cross for you and me. I needed it because of who I am. I needed it because of what I've done. God did not need to do it. God chose out of His love for us to send Jesus Christ. You know, when people tell me that Christianity is not a religion based on love, I think you just don't understand who God is. The great love that he has. That's what he did for us. Oh yeah, we still have all the forms, we still have all the thistles, we still have all the curse problems. We still have our sinful nature within us that Paul even talks about. But one of these days, that relationship where they came to the garden and God was in the garden and they spoke to him face to face, God's going to restore that relationship. Amen. You know why? Because he loves us. Because he loves us in spite of this. You know what he asked in return? That we love him. That we give ourselves to him. And I can tell you this right now. There is none of us that love God the same way and the same amount of which he loves us. I wish we could all say, yeah, I love God as much as He loves me. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any, yeah, I don't think there's any way. But we can love Him. Yes. Amen. We can love Him for the forgiveness. We can love Him for the gift. Yes. We can love Him for what He has given us. Let's go ahead and go to our Lord. Our Father, as we come in the name of Christ, we thank You. We thank You that you did give the gift. <coughs> and Lord, that just sounds so small. But Lord, we do thank you for it. Lord, we thank you that in spite of the sin, in spite of the disobedience, you still love us. And Lord, we just pray that you would help us to love you. For asking your name. As we stand to sing our hymn of invitation. How much do you love God? Now that's the only question only you can really answer is how much do you love God? Have you given your life to him? Do you belong to him? Is he? Do it? As we sing, if there's any decision you need to make, I invite you to go. Mm -hmm.